Welcome to this week's edition of Mainly Motorsports. And I think it was, what, a couple months ago we had Scott Connors on here and uh, did such a great job. We wanted you back. <laughs> yeah, I was on in uh, December. We helped promote the auction and your, and your show and uh, the vintage race car auction. That went very well. And thank you very much for your help. And, uh, yeah, I think it was back in December, mid-December. Yeah, mid yeah, just before the auction. And, yeah. uh, boy, uh, it's the off-season. Racing's coming. But uh, both of us just lost a friend there last week. And Yes, uh, we did. Played a big part in getting you involved in the sport of racing, huh? Absolutely. He played, uh, played a major part in getting me involved at Beach Ridge Motor Speedway uh, and uh, with the whole entire Grafton family. And uh, he was a huge influence on me early on uh, about how to prioritize uh, racing uh, over p other personal things in your life, like social time and fun. <laughs> but the guy always had fun. And we're, we're yes. talking about Al Grafton, who passed away. Uh, last week, and uh, you know, thoughts and prayers to his entire family, Pat and the boys, and uh, you know, uh, Lance, Lance. You know, who's about your age. Uh, you know, you and him kind of running together, yep. got you hooked. Best in the friends, uh, pretty much senior year in high school, and and that's how uh, I met Al and and his mother Pat, and uh, they got me involved. And that first summer after he graduated, Lance uh, got a race car, and he started racing, and it was unique because uh, his father Al was still racing, so we had matching the 70 Chevelles out there, and we had a lot of fun. And uh, you know, Al, Al taught us a lot about how if you've got $25 in your pocket and you got to buy a ball joint for your car, and you have to get into the racetrack, at the end of the week you find out a way to do both. Yeah. And it doesn't really matter how you just do, and and somehow it always comes together, and you're always there. Yeah, and he was. Uh it was a lot of fun. He was always smiling. I remember he always had the shirts. I, I think they only had like a dozen shirts that said Al Graffham, the legend or something. The legend, you know? Al Graffham. Al yep. Graffham. And, uh, you know, he was always always willing to help with advice or, you know, ideas. And, and uh, you know, I really got to know them uh, back in, I think it was getting ready for the 1990 season. I was building a new car with Scott Poulin. Scott had always raced Camaros. Mm -hmm. um, Lance had the Chevelle, so he called Lance and said, hey, uh, you know, what do you know about these, you know, Sweet Peas building a Chevelle, come on, you know, right. can yeah. you? he was there every day helping me, and, um, because he still had his Chevelle, and at right. that time, he had, he only raced a couple of years, and, right, and, we ran 88 and 89, you know, it's funny when you think of drivers, uh, you know, and, you know, how many, what would Lance have done had he not oh, gone off and got yeah. married, and not, yeah. you know what I mean, so he had a short career, and it was funny, so I got to know Al and Pat, and, uh, that summer, and, you know, they, Lance was, you know, he was helping the Kudamashes mm -hmm. uh, with the modified, but he was right. always around for me to right. advice. And I remember I, I wrecked, so he said, instead of fixing yours right off, let's put the motor in, in my old Chevelle, and you can run that while we're fixing yours. So we did a few weeks, and, and uh, come a Saturday night, I couldn't run. So I said, right. well, uh, you know, I got to work, and I can't run. You can run, Lance. Well, Lance had a commitment. Uh, he couldn't run, so right. we said, Al, you want to run it? And he, he jumped at the chance, and it was the last race. That was his that he, last hurrah. Yeah, yep. He got spun out and got hit by Doug Shores Doug and the Shores, big T-Bird, yeah. either yep. Doug Shores or John Drew, and that, yep. that finished it off. But uh, still, it. I you know, we used to run into him down the store. I just saw him a couple weeks ago, you know, talking about mainly motorsports and oh, yeah. all the shows, and he was looking forward to uh, – you know, the last 10 years, you know, he's really been involved with Todd yeah, in, in the JBR team. racing. Yep. And, uh, you know, I know they had a lot of fun. And Pat... And, he drove know, the hauler for a long time yep, with those guys. To the and races Pat's with always the, involved. The K&N. And, and, you know, now you, you would see him at the, you know, Archie's Cup races or right. whatever. So, you know, it is it is too bad. And, you know, I mean, it's sad. And, you know, uh, we lost Malcolm yep, last year uh, or a year before. Months ago, you, know, right? and, uh, you know, and then Al. And, you know, you're going to miss that smile and, you know, everything. But... You don't realize as these older fellows pass on how much they've brought to. There's you, Scott, right? Scott right. Connor, junior, senior in high school, and right. you know exactly. Al plays a part in it. You know, huge, and, and huge part. And they introduced me to the Poolins and Danny and Scott and all that stuff, and 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 all of that was was a big deal for me. You know, uh, being a teenager in Saco, so I knew all the guys from Saco and the Graffins were big in racing all those years from the time it pretty much opened, and uh, it's. Uh, when Malcolm and Al used to get together and uh, races would rain out and we'd find a way to have a lot of fun, tell a lot of stories. Oh, yeah, no, it was There's great. a lot of stories there. So, uh, as I said, thoughts and prayers with the whole Grafham family, Pat, the three boys, and, and everybody else. So we're going to take a break, and we'll be right back here on Mainly Motorsports. Clark's East Side Scrap and West Side Scrap, two of the region's most efficient scrap yards. 
Both locations have the latest and greatest equipment, along with large capacity scales that are constantly calibrated to ensure honest weights. Car crushing, roll-off containers, scrap metal, Clark's East Side Scrap in Chelsea, and Clark's West Side Scrap in Farmingdale. Don't fix it, scrap it. Welcome to Mainly Motorsports. To order copies of a show, send a check or money order for $15, shipping and handling included, to Mainly Motorsports, 326 Roosevelt Trail, Wyndham, Maine, 04062. And please add a description of the show. Well, welcome back to Mainly Motorsports. And you touched on uh, the beginning of the show, Scott, about the auction and uh, another successful auction, huh? Another successful auction. Uh, we, we raised about $7,200 this year, and I thought that the first year it was, it, was, it was a little bit higher than that, but come to find out it really wasn't that much higher than that. So two years in a row, right around the $7,200, $7,500 uh, uh, amount. So we're very excited about that, and it, it definitely made us say that we're already committed to doing it again in 2016. And uh, with uh, working with you and your show, that's a great venue. It gets everybody up there. It gives everybody a, a plenty of reasons to be excited yep. between your pit crew challenge and with your raffling off cars, and then we're doing the auction, and uh, we're pretty excited. We've already started taking collections for next year, so if you guys have anything, feel free to uh, send it our, our way. Well, and, before we came on the air, I was, I'm telling you, I'm going, I'm going to go gangbusters this yep, year. Yep. I've already started doing drop-offs at uh, John McMullen's, and... He doesn't mind. We can fill his garage all we want, he said. Yeah, no, that's good. And, uh, you know, it's, this is when you could do it, you know, months in advance, that's when you get the opportunity to get creative or you kind of, right. you know, you're not in that little rush and like, oh, I can throw this out or throw that out. Right. Still some of the stuff, I mean, think of those programs that came in at the last hour. It, and, exactly. You know, and some of the other things the Trophy Carol brought. So And mentioning yeah. it now, people maybe start thinking about stuff. Maybe yeah. they're moving or maybe they're doing spring cleanups. So they they find some stuff, anybody finds anything, we'd, we'd love to have it. Well, that's what got me thinking, and I was online the other day, and I go, huh, saw something, bought it, now i got to put a little work with it, but it'll be one of those creative gifts that, you know, or somebody would bid on, it's like it has, you know, something anybody could do. But it has the unique fact that value. It's, but it's sitting there, and it's all done. Right. You know, and uh, right. so, yeah, you know, pretty excited about that, and, you know, as far as your organization goes, you know, you really have three big things on your docket. Right. Uh, the auction in January. Right. Summer Fest Summer in August. Fest. And then the Hall of Fame, the Hall of Fame coming banquet. up here in April. Yeah, coming up uh, Saturday, April 4th at the Augusta Civic Center. Uh, last year was our first year to be in the main auditorium floor. We'd grown that much. A uh, huge success. Uh, a lot of people, we had five inductees last year, Mike Rowe being one of them. Um, Leland Kangas was in last year's group. I don't remember Jimmy all Burns, them. Jimmy Bobby Burns, Alexander, who's Bobby gonna be Alexander, who's going to be on the, later right. in the show. And that will give me a chance to talk to him about what that meant to be uh, at that venue. You know? Right, and you know, it's unique to to sit at a round table and see people sitting around like Dave Darvo and, and, and then he might be sitting at a table with Dan McKay. So it's yep. kind of neat to see the cross well, generations hanging out. You know, out. last year was very special to me because, you know, friend and uh, driver of mine, Mike Rowe, getting inducted. But even more special than that was I brought Sandy McKinnon up. Sandy McKinnon had never been. Perfect example. He, he was always in Florida, never been. Right. I said, I want you to go. Sandy said, I can't go. I said, why can't you go? He says, honestly, he says, when Jimmy McClure got inducted, I didn't go because I was in Florida. I said, okay, well, you're not in Florida this year. He said, well, I, I can't go because I didn't make that one. I said, I'm pretty sure Jimmy McClure is not going to be worried because you weren't sitting there right. when he got inducted. You were in Florida. Right. I said, you're going. He said, one of the best things he ever did was go, and here he is and this year being he's, inducted. He's on the list. You know, I mean, the people that were coming up to him when we walked in, Sandy McKinnon, Sandy McKinnon, right. you know, and... Uh, and I talked to him last week, and he says, you know, I, I didn't believe when I got the phone call. He says, and I know you told me that if I ever get in there, how big of a deal it would be. And I, I didn't believe it. He says, but, you know, I got people that are buying tables of, you know, my family's going and everything. Right. And he is just so excited about it. And that's what it's about. And, right. you know, you might not know Sandy McKinnon or, or the other ones that are going in. Right. But to hear their speeches and see the... Oh, you yeah. Know, you know what impressed me last year? When I was sitting there, and, and I think it was a gentleman that got inducted from down in the spud area. It wasn't Bob Alexander. I think it might have been the other guy or, or one of them. And crew chiefs that used to work with them, crew guys. The people still come out. You know, they... Right. You know, so they're going in. Sandy's going in. But you know right. what? Everybody that was involved with him that made right. him what he was. They feel like they're all going in. Is going in. And, right. and I think that's what this, this Hall of Fame is really 
has really done. Uh, you know, it's really made everybody feel like they're a part of it. I agree. I agree. And this year, we have uh, Dick Berger going in, Steve Blood, Mike Johnson. That's going to have two or three tables. Yeah. Um, and Stevie Nelson from, from Unity, who I grew up watching in the 70s. Uh, that'll be two or three tables. Um, of course, Sandy McKinnon, and we have Mark Jones going in. So we're, we're excited. We get good reputation, uh, representation from the entire state, from all the tracks, all the way up in the county. So uh, we, we're excited. Yeah, and, you know, the nice part that I've seen over the last few years, because I think I've gone to four or five of the inductions, is you're seeing the younger generation, our generation, now participating in that. Yes. Like you mentioned, Dan McKay right. was at the banquet last year. Um, I, I just think that's huge because if it wasn't for the likes of these guys right. and the prior inductees, there'd right. be no more right. sports. And and even even the, uh, the the vintage race car association itself, you know, there was a little bit of a changing of the guard, generationally speaking, this year with the directors, with myself coming on board, Danny Bubar coming on board, uh, I believe uh, Brad, Brad Hammond. Hammond coming on board. So it, it you know. It's, it's this group now, it's time, it's our turn. It's, yeah. uh, those guys brought it a long way, they brought it 12 years, and, and it's time for us to, to, to foster the next generation. So. Yeah, so, and probably the biggest change that's gonna take place this year is when you guys honor the driver of the years. Uh, right. You know, in the yes. past, anybody that hasn't gone, you know, they would, there would be a nomination, nomination papers would be sent out, uh, the board of directors and everybody would vote, yeah. come back in. We'd have three. Finalists, finalists, bring them in, one of those finalists. And then one of the finalists, right. So this year they decided that they would honor a representative from each track, got the tracks involved to, right. to nominate their representative, and then as they all filtered their stats together, now the organization, you will give out your driver of the year, That's but correct. still there's five or six drivers that are going to be recognized on stage. Right, from all the different tracks and the, and the touring series. Yep. So the, uh, it won't be all the touring series, but all the touring yeah, one series. one touring driver. One touring driver, you know, between the past and, I and think, the act. And the you know, and I legends. talked to Bruce Elder about this and up at the, the show in Augusta, uh, and I said, you know, to me, that has been such a positive uh, change. When I go on and see social media and I turn on Facebook and, and a Zach Audette, you know, right. posts his letter that he received from you guys and people are commenting and the likes. And, and I got a message from Ken Minot this week. Uh, all excited and anxious about it because, you know, Richard and Vanessa and Ken and his wife and some other staff members from West Castle They're are all going. Gonna come down. And that's what we exactly had hoped for when it got talked about right. was the tracks get involved. TJ, TJ's on there. Yeah. So I'm sure they'll have a big contingency come down from from uh, Oxford area. And, yeah, and, and that's, support him. You know, that's that's huge, and that's what you that's what you wanted. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I'm excited to to for them to be a part of that because I remember. It was the Hall of Fame uh, induction ceremony of 2006, which was recognized in the 2005 season. Um, Mike Rowe was nominated uh, along with a couple other drivers. Mike Rowe won. So when he um, gave his speech, his beginning speech, and then you give a second speech as you win, he got up there and, and he said, you know, I've given my share of speeches over my lifetime. And, you know, I'd like to give my car owner the opportunity to speak. And I really wasn't interested in that. I wasn't obviously prepared. And, you know, and through some coaxing and people, oh, come on up, you know. And when I'll never forget, when I went up and, and you know, I got on the podium and going to speak. And you look out there. Oh, yeah. And I look, and there's Dick Walsenhume and Ralph Cusack sitting to my right. And I look over, and there's Dave Davo and, you know, Russ Nutting and guys like that. And I'm like, wow. Right. You know, so for, for you drivers that are getting recognized for your 2014 accomplishments at your tracks, you need to take that moment and you need to relish in it. When you look out there and you look at see who you're speaking in front of, right. you know, you, you really should feel honored and uh, Absolutely. proud of yourselves for what you accomplished. So it is going to be an exciting thing. You get a meal and yeah, what, are we the, have, what are the time frames? So, so what we have going on here is uh, you have a social hour from 4 p.m. to 5 and, and dinner at 5, awards at 6. Um, it's $40 a ticket. Uh, we can still take... Uh, Reservations for tickets all the way up through Saturday the 21st. So um, you have a few days left to still to still get tickets. If you need anything, you can contact us on the website, or uh, I'm sure all of you know how to get a hold of myself or John McMullen or Kristen Smith. Yeah. And uh, and we we will make sure you get tickets if you're interested in going this room. Yeah. Still room. No. As a matter of fact, last year I bought a table of eight tickets, and I had three or four people back out at the end. So it right. was it, you know. So right. yeah, they'll they'll find. They'll, 
I know they have a structure, okay, and they have the 21st. Now, now, you need a ticket. You don't hesitate. To Somebody call. will have one, I, yeah. I, I bet. Yeah. Don't call up the morning Apparently of. Apparently, C will because he buys eight. Yeah, don't call <laughs> up the morning of the show and say, hey, I'm on my way up, and I got a truckload of eight of us. You right. Know? But, you know, one or two, they'll squeeze you. They'll put a table. We'll, we'll find some It's room. all about making money. And, and I was in the restaurant business, so whatever the final number is, they usually cook 10% over just in case. So you're all set. If so someone needs to, I won't eat. Take that 21st date and throw it out the window, right? Right, absolutely. But no, and I am, when I say this, this isn't a sales pitch. I'm encouraging anybody that hasn't been to this to attend this event because it is, it is very professionally put together. It's very well it organized. Is. And last year you moved down into the big auditorium, and right. so there's plenty of room. And uh, it's, it's... For those of us that we race at this level and have been doing it, you know, for 25 or all of our lives, uh, to be in that room with those legendary drivers is, is quite... So, and be able to just talk with them and hear the stories. It's, and, it's, it's, well, and the, and the it's neat okay. part is, is, you know, as you start attending these type of things, then they recognize you. And, and, I, and I'll tell you, you know, since I took over Mainly Motorsports, some of my biggest highlights is being recognized and having people come up and talk to me. And I'll give you two of them. And, and they're probably not people that are going to jump off the map, okay? Probably both won't be in that Hall of Fame one time. As I'll never forget going to Summerfest and Rick Zemla coming up and introducing mm-hmm. himself to me. Hey, you do a nice job in your show. Now, Rick Zemla? No, Rick Zemla was winning all them races back in, what, 82, 83? Right. In the late model divisions and the championships with yeah, Steve Roman. The Pepsi Roman. car. Yeah, the Pepsi Challenger. One yeah. year it was, a, it was just a plain red and white right. 01, and then it came with the Pepsi Challenger. So... He don't know me. I was in the stands in awe of this man's talent. And for him to come up and acknowledge me, because what I'm doing now, was, was pretty like, ooh. And then John Fippen, the late John Fippen, came up to me one time. No, he know who he knew I was. Right. You know, and said, hey, young man. He says, I, I was watching your show the other night. Nice job. I like that piece you did or something. So, yeah. So when you get up there and those guys come over and, and you, you find yourself in a conversation with with uh, Bobby Turner or Dick Walsh and Hume or whoever, yep. you know, it's a, it's a big deal. It is a big deal. You know, so deal. congratulations to all the nominees that are going to be inducted and to all the drivers of the years from their local the finals, tracks. absolutely. And, you know, because it's, it's, this is the real deal. It's a fun time. You know, April 4th. So I know that Scott said the 21st. Don't wake up on the 23rd and go, geez, I'd really like to go to that. You call. They'll get you in. We'll find, we'll find somebody that probably has a ticket. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We'll take a break, and we'll be right back here with Scott and talk about... we got to talk some old racing. we got to talk some more. Maybe we, some old mod talk. Old mod talk. All right, we'll take a break. We'll be right back here on Mainly Motorsports. Today's vehicles are equipped with complex safety features, such as anti-lock brakes, seat belt restraints, and airbag systems. Even collision avoidance systems. Not available in all models. Hi, I'm Sean Moody from Moody's Collision Centers. We don't wish bad luck on anyone, but even with today's technology, we need to keep our eyes on the road and our hands on the wheel. Moody's Collision Centers, now with nine locations in Maine. Patman's Redemption and Agency Liquor Store is located at 95 Tanberg Trail in Wyndham, Maine. With over 400 feet of hard liquor and 15 doors of ice cold beer and soda, Patman's can handle all of your beverage needs. And if it's wine on your agenda, we have over 300 varieties in stock. Then when the party's over, Patman's can handle all of your main returnables, and we welcome all bottle drives. And if you're late for the race, drop off the bottles and pick up the cash at your convenience. Hey, this is Patman himself. Just letting you know that Patman's is your one-stop shop for all your thirsty needs. Well, we're here with noted historian Scott Collins, right? noted. noted historian. Yes. Well, the last time we just beat into the ground the dirt days with the limited sportsman guys. Yep, and then, and then the early pavement days. And the early pavement days, you know, the names and the drivers and that. But something that has really, in the last month or so, really come to light with me is the modifieds. And, and it's because of what Jeff Martell's doing with that little slot car track. And, you know, people saw him in at the show. He was had a booth in at the race and preview show. And okay. People are looking at him like, wow. And have you seen him online? I've seen him on uh, on Facebook. They, they caught my eye. Uh, I don't know. What's it been? A couple months he's been doing that. Yep. And, uh, you know, first one shows up, it looks like Willie Elliott's car. And then one shows up, it's Danny Poulin's car. And come to find out, that's yours. Yeah. You know, and then he's got the uh, the Peterson car, the nine. Yeah. That uh, Jeff Stevens drove. Yeah. Right? You know, Mayetta's old. You know, Mayetta's car. The, the Richie that, Evans that look. That kind of goldish orange 16. Yeah, the Richie Evans look. And. And, and then tonight we were looking at uh, uh, the Phil Pinkham car. Yeah, uh, no, uh, David, David, Pinkham. David Pinkham car. I mean, yeah. and, we, and you commented, I tell anybody, when he takes those pictures and puts them on Facebook, 
those are so real looking. I mean, right, right down like you right. mentioned, the Kendall GT The Kendall decal GT and, you know, oil decal that we all had. Right. And uh, wow, it's just... It's just it's just amazing. So I haven't even gone up and raced my car yet. And, and when I sent it, I sent an email off to Danny Poulin about it, and I said, "Hey, what do you think of this?" And he he absolutely freaked. Like oh, yeah. I, I want it, I want it, you know. And uh, we're gonna have Jeff come on, and we got some highlights of you know the cars racing, and we're showing some pictures of the different chassis, uh, the different looks of them, and it's amazing. And and they look so realistic. They know? do, and you know that the way that slot car is designed. That, that era of cars, that late 80s, it's a perfect model. It's a perfect design for that, with that Cavalier body. Yep. Right. Yeah, and then, I mean, it brings us back to those mod days, you know, and just think about it. And, you know, had it not been for the, you know, the Weatherby injury and the death, um, you know, do you think the mods would still be going there? Or? Possibly, you know. I, at, at that, I was thinking about that actually on the way over here because I, I knew we were going to be discussing that, and I was wondering if they'd still be going I really don't know. Maybe they would have uh, got kind of to me moved down like motor wise. No, no, they were pretty expensive those, class to run. One of those classes. I don't think you could run a track with both those classes right. now. The the super late models of the pro right. series versus and the mods. Uh, right. You know, one of those classes would have probably gone by the wayside. You know, right. and you don't see any track try to do them both now. You know. Right. And and I've seen how over the years uh, on Tom's past tour, how the his past mods have really come back and he really has a very good strong car count there and i think that's got a lot to do with the size of the motor and the tire and it's it's not as expensive yeah, as yeah, those the super affordability late. yeah the know. affordability of it and i think that if if beachwood would have you know obviously if it wasn't for the other circumstances but if they'd had to keep them around if they would have kept them around they would have had to have kind of brought them down a notch or something because they were pretty expensive even back then yeah now did you did you have a favorite one or, you know, any? Uh, you know, I really didn't. That's uh, probably one class, you know, when I started going out there that, I mean, I became friends with Danny Poulin, so I guess he was. Well, Pete Rondo, too. I was pretty close with those guys. And, um, and so, and they were both from Saco and I was from Saco. And, uh, of course, uh, I like to watch David go in that 61. And, and at that time, the Cuda Marshes lived in Saco. And so then we were all friendly. So I didn't really have a favorite. I just liked all those guys that yep. were kind of from the same town with. So, and they were all competitive and, and fun and, uh, and good guys to race and with. And then you had the guy from Barrington, New Hampshire, would show up with some old relic. And oh, yeah. He scraped it off the pavement and oh, yeah. put it together, and then he beat them all. And that's Bobby Gahan. But, uh, right, yeah. yeah, the, yeah. The, mods were, the mods were something. And which brings me to another topic. And, uh, you know, we talked about Al Grafham, you know, passing away. Um, you guys just lost a Hall of Fame member as well this past week in Jerry Seavey. Right. And, uh, you know, Jerry Seavey and Bob Bushley, two noted car builders uh, and car owners that were in the Hall of Fame because of their driver. Right. You know what I mean? And, and you know, I was thinking that when I was talking about it the other day, you know, uh, does that show you how good of a driver you are? Because let's face it, I'm a car owner. Right. Probably more known as a car owner because of my mainly motorsports, not who I, or, you know, my micro days, okay? Right. Other years, I was just a car owner that wrote some checks, you know? Then we have car owners like Dickie Fowler, has had really great drivers in all of his cars. Absolutely. Won championships, won races, you know? So that tells you how good a driver is when he puts the car owner on the map. Right. And we're talking about a driver, Homer Drew, that put Bob Bushley Sr. and Jerry Seavey on the map. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, just just amazing that that era, and just you know, so it's when you know it's awful that death brings us back right. into that era and makes us right. think. And, and I was at the Hall of Fame induction when Jerry got inducted, and I think probably my highlight was when Tim took the podium, his son Tim Seavey, and talked about uh, a letter he had received, and uh, it came from Hugh Hefner. Oh no, kidding! From Playboy, right? Because. His J2s and his 22s, oh. his team was known as the Playboy Racing Team. Right. So when they wanted to do that, they reached out to Playboy for permission to use that Playboy. That term. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and, they, and I think it was actually maybe a plaque or a letter. And Tim, I remember Tim reading it, and he said, you know, when he was reading it off, and everybody's in the audience is like, you know, this is coming from, we don't know where this is coming from, you know. Right. And, you know, we were honored to, you know, with the seven, you know, and he says, sincerely, your friend or whatever, Hugh Hefner, Hugh Hefner. you know what I mean? Everybody's like, wow, you know. And wow. Yeah, so it's pretty pretty neat. And uh, so, you know, condolences as well go out to that Absolutely. family. Absolutely. You know, and the Hall of Fame has lost another, you know, another member. And that's, you know, we talk about Summerfest and when those guys get introduced from the trailer and come out. Absolutely. You know what I mean? That's, yep. that's a big deal. It, you know, 
you know, that's a big deal for them. You know, and it gives you a chance to see, and, and they're still, it's nice that they're playing a part in what you guys are trying to right. do. Right, and that, that's a big effort uh, on the Main Vintage Race Car Association was early on when they first got started was to get these guys recognized early on as they should be uh, so they can enjoy it and because and, uh, you never know. And uh, so thankfully he, he got in a few years back and he was able to be uh, recognized and, and honored. Yep, no, exactly. But uh, I appreciate you taking the time, spending uh, a little Absolutely. bit of time. Absolutely, I appreciate show. the time again to promote our, our deal. And we'll, I'll be back on again in a little while to talk about Summerfest. Yeah, we got Summerfest. <laughs> and then before you know it, we ain't even turned a competitive lap yet, and we'll be talking about the auction. Absolutely. I know we will be. I, I mean, it goes so quick. So yep. uh, get ready to st- I mean, it's coming. I mean, Lee's going to be opening up. So, right. you know, plan your schedules. And like I said, we, you know, I'm going to have a little contest going on, try to give away some prizes and uh, have some fun at the beginning of the year picking some different race winners. So it'll be a chance for you, the, the audience, to tune in and tune into our Facebook page and, and follow along with us and, and play with us and, and have a part. So, uh, right. like I said, thanks again, Scott. Well, thank and, you uh, for having me on. I want to take a break. We come back. I'm going to have uh, Jacob Doerr in house and we're going to talk about Gary Crooks and the, and the grip seminar that he came back from uh, a couple months ago and, uh, you know, the knowledge that you pick up when you go down there and, and take in these weekend yeah, I haven't been to one of those, but I, I, I I'll been. tell you, they, they say, and when you watch yourself on this week's show, just stay tuned in and listen to what Jay <laughs> I will. Bob Alexander have to say about it, and next right. year you can sign yourself up. That's right, absolutely. All right, we'll take a break. We'll be right back here on Mainly Motorsports. You don't have to wait until the end of camping season to get your best price. Hi, I'm Scott from Scott Recreation. We're starting our end of season sale now. This is our biggest selection ever. Fifth wheels with savings up to $20,000. Big selection of toy haulers starting at only $19,999. 2015 trail runner bunkhouses with super slides and island kitchens for only $199 per month. Motorhomes, truck campers, and more. Financing available. Trades welcome. Scott's Recreation, Turner and Manchester, Maine. For a trusted name in residential and commercial site work in the southern Maine area, call Peter Pettit Excavating. We can handle everything from the complete house lot to those nasty water and sewer line repairs. Septic systems are another area that we specialize in. During the snow season, Pettit Excavating has the equipment to handle any size job. And when the race season arrives, be sure to follow the number 7 Ewitt's Family Restaurant Chevrolet on the past Super Late Model Tour. Call 207-282-9305 to get the job done right. That's Peter Pettit Excavating. Well, welcome back to Mainly Motorsports, and as you heard me mention last week and earlier in the show today, we were going to spend some time talking about the GRIP seminar and some of the guys that went to the GRIP seminar, and right now I want to welcome Jacob Doerr to Mainly Motorsports. Jake's been on a few times, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, coming off his first season in the Pro Series at Beach Ridge, before we go to GRIP, let's talk about the first season at Beach Ridge. First season at Beach Ridge. What'd you think? It's different. That's some stiff competition, isn't it? Yeah, that's why we went there, though. Yeah, no, you want to race against the best, and... Yeah. Uh, you know, had some learning curves and, you know, yeah. but as a team, you, you kind of hung together and, you know. Towards the end of the year, we really kind of hit a stride. So in the off season, built a new car. So you got to be pretty pretty excited and optimistic. I mean, not yeah. not setting unrealistic goals, but you got to no. be excited about to go back for year two because usually year two is better than year one. I hope so. Unless we have that sophomore slump. Sophomore slump, I'm yeah. a little too old to be a sophomore. Yeah, really. Considering yeah. they didn't let me be a rookie. Yeah, well, you're going on 29 years old, so. No, I'm not. You're not 29? <laughs> no. How old are Don't you? Don't encourage Lamb here. <laughs> How old are you? 25. Ugh, still wet behind the ears. But uh, no, so, you know, excited to go back for year two and see you with that. Built a new chassis from yep. distance racing. Yep. So, you know, going back with new stuff, you know, same, everything else the same yep. team wise. And First time know, we've ever had a new car. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. So then you really took your game to another level. Is yeah. You went down to the GRIP seminar down at DEI, Gary Crooks, yep. Jason Enders put this GRIP seminar down and uh, to help your program. I mean, yeah. uh, no other reason than to help your program. No, that, that was why we went. I wanted to learn some more stuff. I've uh, kind of been doing a lot of things to try to learn as much as I could, whether it was helping out Pastor last year or, you know, in my off weeks and now going to that GRIP seminar. So sum it up. I mean, we're going to touch on it a little more, but yep. sum it up as far as one of those things that's really worth going to. I thought so. I, I took a lot out of the out of the three days. See, I couldn't go because it's three days, and it's not that I yeah. can't get away for three days. It's because I don't have the attention span to stay focused on something for three days. Yeah. Three hours, you know, if it's an entertaining movie, you got me. <laughs> but three, you know, listen to people talk about stuff that's way over my head. 
But, uh, yeah. you know, I talked to you, I spoke with Bob Alexander, who we're going to have on after you, um, and he was very impressed with what he took out of it, you know, yeah. and, and the knowledge that they gave. And, and, you know, one of the things he mentions is, you know, they didn't talk over you. Yeah. You, you know, they would... They, they would talk to you, whatever, whatever your level was. I mean, they had a good sense for what I thought the level of the room was, whether they had, you know... I know what us from New England were at for a level versus some of the other areas, but everybody seemed to be really well taking to it. So Now, when you say other areas, was there, you know, a big region of the country represented? Or? Um, I mean, you had me and Alexander from Maine, then we had some people from Canada, had some people from Florida, had some people from uh, Wisconsin, so... So yeah, and everybody I mean, looking, it draws people from all areas. Yeah, and and it looks and you know obviously probably a lot yep. of more late model, super late model guys, yep. but you probably get some entry level guys versus yep. some guys running open wheel stuff. Yeah, some stuff. people that were racing super late models or late models for years, and then you had people that had just bought one over the winter and they're getting ready to go racing. So yeah, no, and Gary, uh, you know, we know him from the Northeast yep. with crew chief and Malker and Lonnie Somerville and that deal is very knowledgeable. I mean, yeah. very knowledgeable and then surrounds himself with knowledgeable people. And, yeah. you know, so what were some of the topics that they discussed? And um, We had a bunch of different topics and they brought in different speakers for each topic. So whether we had one, we had one on aerodynamics, uh, suspension geometry, basic setup, shock tuning, bump stops, cooling, carburetors, brakes. Um, there are a few more. I just... You know, some of them, off the top of my head. well, you know, obviously some yeah. of the things that, you know, you know, carburetor, you hook it up, you jet it, you this, you that, but some of the stuff like the geometry yeah. and, you know, the bump steer and bump stop and stuff like that, yeah. I mean, that's pretty entailed. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it is. And I mean, the carburetor section, it was uh, Dan Vanderlei from VDL Carburetors. Yeah. And it, I don't care what you knew about carburetors going into it, you had to have learned something coming out of it. Cause, really? I mean, he covered every aspect of how it works, the way different things are done to them to make you know, what, what they kind of do and kind of give you a little idea of it. Yeah. And, of course, you get the cool background stories from all their different experiences. Oh, yeah. Now, what was your, what do you think will help Jake Dore the most moving forward? Uh, I don't really know one thing that could help me. I found so many different things through that. Uh, I've got four or five pages of notes besides the pages that they gave us. Yep. You know, just different things that I that we talked about, that I heard, that I that I saw a picture of or something that, that I wanted to do. So, I mean, I've got a lot of different ideas for testing this year. When, so we'll try some stuff and hopefully find some more speed. So did you find yourself coming right home from the seminar and then already making changes on the race car that you have together? The, the one that I have together that hasn't hit the racetrack? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> no kidding. Now, how about, what do you feel like for the season? Obviously, you can't call Jason every you know, yeah. practice round or Gary, do they offer that up as far as, you know, we're out here if you have any questions or... I mean, I, I feel like they would if I, mean, I, it wasn't, if I had yeah, any... They didn't I mean, tell 100 people in the room Yeah, they didn't tell us, 100 but, people in the room to, hey, you know, call me up after every practice session. But, I mean, they're, they're all busy. They're all racing every weekend too. But, you know, I've, I mean, I think you'll get any bit of information you need out of those guys. But mainly, if you didn't learn it there, uh, you just didn't ask the right questions. Yeah. I mean, they covered everything you ever wanted to cover and everything, even though they had a presentation and they had the guidelines, it was all an open conversation. So anything you want to talk about, we broke into conversation about. Yeah, and you're right at the DEI complex. Yeah, so yeah we're right at DEI complex. Cool. You look out the windows out the back, you're overlooking the showroom of DEI with, you know, uh, Daytona 500 cars, uh, Dale Earnhardt Sr.'s Weedy car. I mean, just all sorts of different things sitting there. Yeah. So it's pretty neat just being in that area. And then having Earnhardt Technology Group right, right next door, we ended up getting a tour of that uh, on Thursday night before the seminar and just seeing the different things that they're doing. It's amazing. And a name familiar with the Northeast, yeah. Rex Garrett. Yeah, Rex is, Garrett. He heads that up, yeah. doesn't he? Yeah. So, yeah, so no, that was pretty pretty neat. Now, is it something that you, you know, would recommend? Any Somebody comes to Jake Dore and says, you know, what do you think? I mean, it's not very yeah. pricey. I mean, it was it's reasonable to go down for, there. For the information that you learn, yeah, very reasonable. Now, would you go again? Yes. Is it something that a guy, you could go twice and... and I think I would get more out of it the next year. I mean, I, I feel like I learned so much that I couldn't capture everything that they were talking about. I learned so much stuff that I'm going to apply this year. And then from there, when I go back next year, I'll have a different set of questions and kind of a different agenda going through all the topics. 
and kind of be able to learn more information, get get a little more more out of it. No kidding. And I talked to Gary uh, this week, and he said, you know, obviously they came right out of the grip, yeah. and then they went to Smyrna. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, you know, they plan on being there the first weekend yeah. in February again next year, and. You know, so obviously you don't got to book your airline tickets or your motel rooms, but it is something to keep in the back of your mind yep. that, you know, it'll help your racing program. Yep. And, you know, and this is what's neat is now following along with you. And whether you succeed this year or not isn't going to yep. be because of grip. No. You know what I mean? Obviously, there's a lot of luck that goes involved and all that. But, you know, to be able to say that you yep. you brought more knowledge back to here in the Northeast for yourself. I mean, I guarantee I learned something. I, I've got a lot more knowledge to bring back, whether or not. You know, I, I have the racing luck during the year to show it. That's a totally different story. Yeah, no, no kidding. So, no, we're glad. And uh, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll have Bob Alexander, and we'll hear his take on, you know, we get your take is you're kind of like the driver crew chief. Yeah, you know? I mean. Bob Alexander is the guy that's just, yeah. crew, you know, crew chief and so yeah, to speak. I mean, we learned a lot, kind of driver to crew chief communication and all that, kind of breaking it down to different areas to really – how to work on the car to make it better through all the areas, you know, not throw a Band-Aid on one area to, and mess up another one that you weren't thinking about. Kind of how, how the whole corner works together and how everything on the race car works together to create something. No kidding. So, so. that's that's funny because that's kind of like cup stuff. You yeah. know, that's what you hear them communicating yeah, cup I mean, and now it's come to the Saturday night level. Yeah, I mean, Gary brought up a time when he worked with Brad Keselowski saying Brad breaks the corner down into seven sections and he evaluates every section. And, you know, if he makes it better in one area and worse than the other, he kind of, he averages it all out in his head and tells you whether or not, you know, it's the direction to go or not. Yeah, so I remember when we had Kyle Busch, same thing. Yeah. He'd take it a lap and he'd take you through every aspect. Yeah. You know, he'd come down the front stretch and he'd tell you what it was doing in the middle, you know, entry into one, middle of one and two, middle of two, you know. Yeah. By the time he got halfway down the back stretch, I'm like, enough of that. I'm, I don't need to listen to that. It was over my head, but yeah. yeah. But no, yeah. you're absolutely right, and that's what you want to do and be able to communicate yeah. back to your guys. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the best quotes I got out of it was when Gary would tell us, you know, you only get the car that you ask for. You know, when you're working with a crew chief that's helping you out, all they can do is whatever you tell them. Yeah, So you know, they don't know it's loose if yeah. you don't tell them, you yeah. know. And no, that's good. So it's good to hear, and uh, you know, because we kind of wonder, and you know, we talked to Gary uh, before, and you know, now there's talk, you know, trying to encourage him next yeah. year to come up to the Northeast Motorsports Expo and take guys like yourself yeah. and, and Bob Alexander and a few others. So you have testimonials, so yeah. people ask questions, so when they're on the fence on whether I go or not, you know. Yeah. All right, well, we'll take a break. We come back, we'll have Bob Alexander and hear his take, his take on what grip seminars meant to him and what he thinks it's going to mean to his program with his grandson, Wyatt Alexander Racing. Hi, I'm Johnny Wolf. And I'm Dan Wolf. We've been selling and servicing vehicles on Route 25 in Gorham since 1972. Wolf Auto Service offers state inspections, tires, brakes, and suspension. 21st Century Motors has a great selection of cars and trucks starting at $29.99. With no mortgage and low overhead, we sell and service at guaranteed lowest prices. We're just six miles west of Turnpike Exit 47 on Route 25 in Gorham. Online at 21stCenturyMaine.com. Welcome back to Mainly Motorsports, and as we stay on the GRIP seminar theme, uh, we brought Bob Alexander into the studio. I want to thank you, Bob, for taking the two-and-a-half-hour trek down here from Ellsworth. You're welcome. <laughs> and uh, you attended the GRIP seminar, just like Jake did, uh, you know, in the previous segment. And, you know, since you've walked in, that's all you've been talking about is <laughs> the knowledge and the stuff that you feel you gained from this, huh? Definitely. I mean, I'm pumped, and uh, if... A racer doesn't go to this show, or a, a team owner, or a crew chief, from whatever level they're at, they're missing the boat. I mean, it's just uh, the contacts, uh, the information that's there, uh, it's, it's definitely uh, uh, a value. I mean, uh, as I said to you earlier, I mean, it's, it's probably underpriced. And uh, for what Gary charges and uh, the logistics of putting this together, uh, it, it's, a, it's definitely a value. Uh, yeah, and, and like you mentioned, the contacts, and, you know, I talked to Jake a little bit about that, is, you know, obviously they didn't all, as you left that day, go give you a business card, say, hey, call me anytime, after first practice, after whatever, you know, but, but it's the idea now, when you, if you do reach out to one of those manufacturers, or, or Gary himself, or anybody, you know, you know, hey, I, I attended the GRIP seminar, so you've already, you've got your foot in that door, you know? Exactly, exactly, and to know those people on a first name basis, like, I, Everybody's heard of VDL carburetors, but how many people have sat there one-on-one -on -one with Dan Vanderlei 
and asking questions about carburetors. Yeah, I mean, no, it, uh, no, no, you're exactly right. And, you know, so, you know, you're making the big step, your grandson, Wyatt Alexander, you know, going from legend cars to now getting into the full body super late models. Um, so, yeah, not only is he as a driver learning, the whole team is learning, you know. Exactly. So, you know, for you guys to take this step, I mean, it's going to escalate your learning process in a big way. Exactly. Uh, one of the big transitions for me was coming from a conventional setup car, a, a, a late model, big spring car, into a now a coilover car with uh, with bumps and you know big big spring, uh, yeah, big bar soft spring car. Yep. And just the uh, the engineering, the, uh, the 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 physics of that car is totally different from what I was used to setting up. So uh, we were fortunate in that we we purchased an old car. We purchased an, an old one Howe car last year that was fairly current, it had been raced uh, by a successful team, uh, and uh, we put that car together, and, uh, and it was pretty much sorted, so we knew we had a baseline to work from, yep. and Wyatt has some success with that. He got very comfortable very quick in that car, and now with what I've learned here, I've got a, I've got a list, a three-page list of things that, uh, that I want to try, and uh, as far as uh, uh, things that might improve that car. And, uh, yeah, and that's, you know, you're exactly right. And nothing that they give you, and this is just my guess, is not a foolproof fix, you know right. what I mean? You know, it might fix one part of, you know, the racetrack, uh, you know, and, and Jake, one of the things he kept mentioning was the communication that they talked about was breaking your track down and, mm -hmm. you know, so many different segments, so to speak. So, but it gives you the opportunity to fix it one place, but then when it affects something else, is how you go and handle that, you know? Exactly. To know what to do when a, when a certain scenario pops up, uh, you know, I, I'm tight in or I'm tight in the middle, which way do I go? What, what end of the car do I start working with? And uh, so, yes, that's huge. Yeah, so three-day event, you know, yep. you talk about the whole, the whole, uh, you know, the DEI experience, just, just being there. You know, this isn't something they're throwing together in mom and pop's garage and, you know, the furnace is blowing and, you know, it's dirty. And, I mean, this is a, a very well thought out, very professional atmosphere. Very, very classy. Uh, the, the, the facility at DEI uh, has a, uh, uh, you know, a banquet room where they, they hold this. Uh, which has a kitchen, you know, they cater the meals, uh, you, you look out, it's all glassed in, and you look out the windows, and here's all of Dale Earnhardt's uh, history. Yep. They're below you, and uh, just a very classy operation. Yeah. No, and that's, uh, yeah, that's good. And, and I remember, you know, a couple of years ago, they, they tried, they did one down there, and then they tried to do one up here in, in Maine. And the one in Maine, you know, just never took off, because you really need, you know, you need a full house, you know, because there's right. a lot of cost involved with, with you know, putting this on and, you know, uh, for three days. And, you know, so, you know, what I think with having guys like you and Jake, I know Joe Squillier went and his team a couple of years ago, you know, is start spreading the word up here. And, you know, you'll see more people, you know, traveling up here from the Northeast to these grip seminars. And, you know, that's what we're trying to do for Gary as well is kind of help that process. Right. I spoke with Gary Crooks about that. And, uh, and one thing I didn't realize was the logistics of bringing that caliber of, of presenter to Maine. Um, yeah, it's easier for the racers to come to Portland or Augusta, wherever, but the logistics of getting that person to take three days out of their schedule, come to Maine, do a presentation, stay overnight, fly back, uh, was uh, very expensive. Whereby, by doing it right in Mooresville, now those people can take an hour or two out of their day, drive over, uh, do their presentations and uh, and go back and go to work. Yeah, and so that's uh, what I think that allows you is a few more present, you know, presenters. Exactly. You know what I mean? They're able to, you know, instead of now we got okay, we got eight that can come up and we got to cram everything into three days, and those eight are going to have to maybe they're not an expert in a certain field, but they're going to cover that field. Now you're going to bring an expert in. You, you know, we're going to talk about breaks. We're going to bring somebody from what, AP Breaks? AP, AP Breaks, yeah. And, and you get to pick those people's brain because they will stop in the middle of their presentation and answer any questions you might have. You know, if you've got a question about brake bias or, or, or ratios and things like that, uh, they're going to answer it. And, uh, and the other thing I picked up on was something Gary said. He says, the things I'm doing today are different than the things I did six months ago. Oh. It's evolving that quickly. 
So you might think you pick up a book, in fact, Bob Bowles, who publishes, uh, he's uh, one of the uh, contributors to Circle Track magazine. Bob's there, and uh, probably one of the sharpest chassis guys, uh, he's published Bibles that, that cover race cars. Yeah, and different uh, aspects of different the aspects. Roll Center. Yeah, exactly. you know, we've all seen them. I think, you know, probably 20, 30 years ago when I started racing, I think I bought one. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, how to get into racing. Oh, i got to buy this book. Exactly. <laughs> so here's a guy that, that uh, networks with all the racers all over the country through his contacts with Circle Track. Uh, and now uh, you can get on the phone and call him, and he's going to remember you. Yep. Hey, hey, Bob, I met you in uh, in Morrisville, and uh, here's what I'm doing. What do you think? And uh, those type of things. So, uh, I mean, t to be able to, if you went out one on one to try to contact those people, either one, they wouldn't answer the phone, yeah, or or two, you'd have just a few seconds to talk with them, and they wouldn't know who you were, and. Uh, so uh, that, that to me is, is one of the largest values of, uh, of what you do. And uh, one thing that Gary brought out for the price of, uh, let's say a test session where you had to buy a couple sets of tires and, and lease a track for the afternoon or, or the day and uh, you get logistics of getting your car, your crew to the track, you've just paid for grip. Yep. And, and probably learned a tenth of what you would learn at that grips it because they've if it's out there they've already tried it yeah oh yeah uh, that and the opportunity to uh, to visit some of those shops uh, we went next door to uh, Earnhardt Technology Group Rex Garrett yep a Portland guy I mean uh, I think he's from uh, Scarborough, uh, Scarborough. He, a mile down the road I mean when I back when we were racing back in the 80s every car in that racetrack had a Garrett built gearbox no sticker on it yep. you know and uh, yeah, so he's been around and, and, you know, just took a chance, packed his family up and headed down there. And now look at him. Right. He heads that all up. Today's vehicles are equipped with complex safety features such as anti-lock brakes, seat belt restraints, and airbag systems. Even collision avoidance systems. Not available in all models. Hi, I'm Sean Moody from Moody's Collision Centers. We don't wish bad luck on anyone, but even with today's technology, we need to keep our eyes on the road and our hands on the wheel. Moody's Collision Centers, now with nine locations in Maine. I did not grow up in the car business. I started as a technician in a small garage, and now lucky enough to own my own dealership. I think buying a new car should be hassle-free with pricing up front. We like to negotiate with everyone the same way. Our goal is for our customers to feel good and make it easy and quick if they so desire. We pay our sales staff to help satisfy your needs, not to collect a traditional commission. Southern Maine Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Maine's only Viper dealer, Route 1 Saco. Award season event is going on now. Yeah, so he's been around and, and, you know, just took a chance, packed his family up and headed down there. And now look at him. He right. heads that all up. And, and that place would just blow you away, uh, the machining uh, expertise that's there. They do a lot of small lot uh, fabrication for various stages, Hendrix, uh, you name it. it yep. It's there, transmissions, rear ends. Uh, again, we got a one-on-one -on -one tour of that place. and. Uh, we went over to Morris Measurement, where they have a KNC machine which holds the chassis, and now it will flex that chassis. It'll it'll uh, give you a graph graphical readout of the the uh, front end geometry, bump steer, Ackerman. Uh, instead wow. of spending a day in the shop doing all that for the, for 150 bucks, whatever they charge for an hour's time to put your car on the KNC and do that, now you've got data to work with hard data. That you know what your car is doing, and so this was more than just sitting in a oh, yeah. classroom. You exactly. know, so was, you got a little bit. I don't want to say hands-on experience because it's hard to have hundred. You know how many people attended on, but yeah, you might as well say hands-on when you went to watch it and be, be in operation. I mean, you give you this whole book of you know, you know, like this. I'm sure Brett's going to make you guard this with your <laughs> life, right? Well, he's threatened me. I tend to uh, sometimes give away more information than I should. <laughs> he says, "Dad, you know, we paid for this." He says, "Yeah, uh, no, you're you absolutely know, right." Uh, and uh, so. You went this year. This is your first time ever going. Would you consider going back? Is oh, it something definitely. that is worth that you can get even more out of it the second time? I believe you will. Uh, in fact, we're making plans right now for next year and uh, possibly tie it in with a trip to the to Speed Weeks in New Smyrna. Uh, 
as a sidebar, uh, my flights were canceled. Uh, we finished up with grip Sunday night, and my intentions were to fly home on Monday. Well, it was a blizzard, and uh, all the flights into Portland and, and Bangor were canceled, so I had to stay an extra. It was going to be Wednesday before I could get out. So Gary says, come on over to the shop. I've got all kinds of work to do. So I spent all day Monday doing the final prep on the 77 car that Zane Smith drove at New Smyrna. Oh, that's awesome. And uh, met Zane, met his mother, uh, got to hang out at Gary's shop, uh, contributed a little bit, yep. and Gary offered me a, a chance to go to Florida with him. He wanted me to jump in the hauler and spend the week in Florida. <laughs> he says, come on down, I'll put you to work. Right? Yeah, yeah, I'm retired. But uh, my wife wasn't very happy with that idea. She was home with uh, six feet of snow in the front yard, and the wood box was getting oh, low. Yeah. So. So, so uh, it, it, it wouldn't have been a pretty sight if I had spent a week in Florida. You, you in might have Florida. been looking for a place to live permanently. <laughs> yeah. But no, and that's, uh, that's, that's the same thing Jake said. You know, and it's funny you said that, that you would definitely go back. You've already made oh, plans, yeah. you know. And uh, yeah. so, you know, like I said, I mean, I know it's 10 months away or 11 months away, but it is something to, to really consider for next year. And we're hoping that we can entice Gary to maybe come up to the Northeast Motorsports Expo or, or maybe even a booth for you guys right. to have up there uh, to kind of help sell his product. You know, he, I mean, obviously they're the salesmen, but there's no better salesman than people that have been through the program. Exactly. You know? No, I would encourage anybody that, that uh, even experienced people, crew chiefs, team owners, from whatever levels, whether it be street stocks or limited or, or whatever level you're racing at, uh, you're going to learn something. And uh, one thing I realized is we don't know what we don't know. You may think, wow, I got the things right where I want it, but uh, out, you know, huh? I'm running third place, fifth place all the time. What's it going to take me to, Where's that other to move up uh, or even uh, tricks for qualifying? I mean, you go out, look at the Oxford 250. If you don't qualify well, you're going home. You've made this huge investment. And that's one of our goals for this year is to try to uh, attempt to qualify for the 250. Yeah, and no, I think the, the confidence that we gained from our, our, we were out three or four times last year. We had some good finishes. And uh, so uh, uh, we're looking forward to maybe. Uh, and then the knowledge up. that you gained. I mean, you got a notebook over there that you just filled with notes. Huh? I was just showing Steve. I mean, I've got, you know, I filled a notebook. That's just the notes besides what, yeah. uh, what we got from, uh, from the seminar. Wow, so. that's crazy. But I, really, I want to thank you for coming down and uh, you know sharing about the program because you know I've paid attention to it before. Like I told Jake, I don't have the attention span to sit through three or four days. Uh, I can barely get through a two-hour movie. <laughs> so, but no, for you racer that wants to take that next step, the Grip Seminar, which runs usually the first weekend in February, first week of February, yeah, every year down at DEI, is something you really need to think about and uh, consider for 2016. Yeah, uh, there is a website. Uh, just do a search for GRIP Seminar, and it take you right to the website. All the information is there. I'm not sure if they've updated everything from this year's seminar yet, Yeah. Uh, but there's information from previous years. Uh, usually uh, they, they mix the presenters up, but it doesn't get boring because you've got one presenter for about an hour, take a little break, and someone Somebody else comes in. So whatever... Uh, aspect of the car bumper front bumper to rear bumper they're going to cover they're it they're covering it. aerodynamics i think um, uh, you mentioned i've got a clip on the uh, the wind tunnel yep uh and that's another thing speaking of that uh they have an offer from some of the presenters that if you wish to bring your car to grip they will make arrangements for discounted services at morse measurement uh, in the wind tunnel so you can actually get hardcore data on your car no, and, that's uh, that, so, yeah, that's pretty good. That's yeah. quite an opportunity. So, and, uh, so you're you're traveling anyway. Why not throw the car in the trailer and uh, and truck it on down to seventy degree weather for uh, two or three you days? Seventy degree. But weather. it was. I mean, while yep. we were there, it yep. was in the seventies, mid seventies, high seventies. You so. came home to six feet of snow. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. thank you, Bob, and uh, really appreciate you coming on and sharing your uh, your information and what you learned and really promoting the grip seminars gary's a big uh, supporter of motorsports even up here in the northeast with you know helping malkar and racing and he's always there right. to help a lot of a lot of teams at whatever they ask for so you know really good and hopefully that continues to grow so we're going to take a break and we'll be right back here on mainly motorsports <laughs> Thank you. 
get the right car at the right price. OTMotorsales.com not sure what brand tire to buy? Town Fair Tire has them all. Michelin, Goodyear, Firestone, Bridgestone, Pirelli, Toyo, Yokohama, Hankook, and more. No matter what size or brand, Town Fair Tire beats all the competition, even online prices. We'll also do a free front wheel alignment with any tire purchase. Name brand tires. The lowest prices. Free alignment? Nobody beats Town Fair Tire. Nobody. Name brands at discount prices. Town Fair Back in February of 2009, as I was setting up my uh, booth display at the racing preview event, Marco's racing preview event, uh, Tim Attaya, who at the time owned the Northeast Motorsports Expo, uh, walked into the building, come over to me and said, hey, you're the reason I'm here. And I thought maybe I left something up to Augusta or just something, you know, wanted to run by something by me, which he did. Uh, he had decided after 19, 20 years of uh, ownership of the event, he was going to pass on the torch, so to speak. He was going to get out, some health issues of his wife. Uh, him just, you know, doesn't have that fire anymore. But he wanted to see the tradition continue, you know, that first, second weekend in January, continue going on up there with the Northeast Motorsports Expo, which started out as the all-seasons motorsports expo, uh, motorsports show. And uh, he had chosen me to hopefully be the successor to what he called his baby. And I was flattered and on it. And uh, you know, had to put some deals together to make it work and purchase the event from him. But, uh, you know, every year we talk in December about the event and some of the things that I'm trying to do. And we always talk about the heyday when he was able to bring Earnhardt and Petty and Parsons and Gant and Tony Stewart. You know, I mean, just the, the things that that man did for the race fans in the state of Maine. Uh, you know, not only with that, but when he was promoting race tracks and, and just doing everything that he did, you know, and... Uh, this past week, Tim passed away uh, at the age of 76, and, you know, my heart felt prayers out to his entire family. I mean, there's a guy that didn't make his mark in the sport behind the wheel, but he made his mark in the sport, you know, out in front of the scenes and meeting the fans and bringing those people, Earnhardt, Petty, Gant, Parsons, Stewart, to a little building up in Augusta, first part of January, and giving you, the race fan, the opportunity to do something and get close to someone that you probably would never, ever, ever have that opportunity to do. And I will never be able to duplicate what he did with the Northeast Motorsports Expo. I said every January, I always thanked him for what he started and thanked him for the opportunity he had given me. And, you know, I'm going to miss that conversation uh, this coming December with him. And um, just really, it's just, it's just sad, you know, and, um, it's been a sad week for motorsports in general. Tim Attire, Jerry Seavey, Al Grafham, and uh, wow, you know, all of them, their families, their friends, their fans, you know, my thoughts and prayers and everybody's thoughts and prayers for mainly motorsports go out to uh, those three and, and all their loved ones that have got that now sudden void in their lives.